Okay. Okay, so yesterday we went through and learned how to post individually. And now this, these are key words that I need you to get from what we did yesterday, is we went through and posted individually. We went from the journal, we started in the top and worked our way down. Posting individually, we go through and look at our general columns and take it from our general journal and we put it in what's called our general ledger. So general journal, general ledger, they go together. Okay. Usually the last couple of days I've been calling it just a ledger, but it's technically called a general ledger. Later on we're going to learn some other real specific ledger ones. Thank you. Um, what we're going to be doing today in 4.3 is we're going to go through and post our totals. Yesterday, when I talked about posting individually, I said, would it make much sense for me to go through in sales and post 60, 675 and 163 and then not have information about what the total sales are for the month? The most important information for the business to have at a quick glance is going to be, is going to be what is my total sales for the month? And I can see from this journal that my total sales for the month is going to be $838. But if I wanted to compare the last three months, I don't want to open up three different journal pages. Would you agree? What I could do then is I could actually go to my ledger, and I could look to see what I had posted in there from August, September, and October to see what my sales is. That's powerful information. That allows me to see what my trend is for sales. Same thing I'm going to do for cash. I need to be able to know because businesses have to go through and balance their cash flows. I talked about it in relationship to what the school does because the school gets money based on taxes, property taxes, and you pay your property taxes once or twice a year. So the school only receives money basically at those two times. They get a, um, other smaller sections, but that's going to be most of the time. They're not going to tell their employees, oh, I'm, I can't pay you now because we don't have any money. Would you work at a place that told you I can't pay you because there's no money? No. So businesses have to manage their cash flows, and sometimes they have to do things called short-term borrowing, meaning we are going to have money to cover this, but the money doesn't come in for a month and a half. So I'm going to go to the bank and do a short-term loan. They're going to loan us money, and then when that money comes in, I'm going to pay them. Because if a business got into the practice of saying, I can't pay it now and having to wait several months, their credit rating is going to go down. People will not trust them as a business, so they have to do those types of things, and that is very much okay for businesses to do. So for us going through and taking our amount from cash debit and putting it into a general ledger and cash credit and putting it into a general ledger, that allows us to see what our trend is for cash flows, how much money goes in a month and how much money goes out a month. So when you look at cash debit, you need to think cash debit. Cash is an asset. It has a debit normal balance. So the debit side is going to be the increase. So that's the amount of money coming in. <coughs> Excuse me. Cash credit is going to be the money, money going out because remember, C cash, C check, C credit, that's money going down. So we could see, all right, certain months businesses may have more expenses because big things may be due. Like, do we pay insurance every month? No. For example, at my, in my family, we used to pay our automobile insurance twice a year, semi-annually. January and July. Now, one of them didn't really work very well. Which one do you think didn't work very well? It's actually January. Why not January? <coughs> right after Christmas? Spent money on Christmas. We don't have as much. So we went and switched. We actually changed now. Instead of paying our insurance semi-annually, we pay it annually. So I pay one lump sum <coughs> for my auto insurance in July, which works well for me because I know I have money from the end of the school year. I can pay it, and then I don't have to worry about it in Christmas. That helps me to manage my cash flows. I don't have to worry about saving up. 
when I go through and budget for my family, I know that X amount of money each month should be set aside to pay that insurance. But the bill doesn't come except once a year. So businesses have to keep in track, like, oh, right, I don't have to pay my insurance this month, but in a couple months I'm going to need to. Do I have the money to cover that bill? So posting individually, we start on the top, work our way down. Posting totals, we work from the left to the right. Now, do not miss this. Thank you, Kyler and Bennett, for turning around. Notice in the bottom of general debit. Do you see how they have a parenthesis and a check mark, or in our case, the letter V in Aplia? Now, we put that there for the same reason that we put something there. This check mark on line five of the journal tells you that you don't have to post um, anything on that amount, right? If I left it blank, it would look like you forgot to do something, which is why we put a check mark here and there, because if we leave it blank, it looks like you missed it. The check mark says, yep, I know nothing goes there. Yep, I know nothing goes there. When we get to the bottoms and we move our totals left to right, I go through and I need to put a check mark below this $2,326 because where would this amount go? Or where did it go? This $2,326. In my ledger, what account? Do we have an account called general debit? No. no. All of this, the 660 to 78, 163, 375, 50, and 1,000 went to each individual account. I don't have one account that this goes into. It went into all of these above individually. If I don't put a check mark there, it looks like I forgot to do something with it. A check mark below it again says, Yep, I took care of it because I posted everything individually. So for general debit and general credit, we put check marks below it to say, taken care of, I don't need to worry about it anymore. Where do you think this column is going to get posted to? Yep, we're going to go to our account sales, and the classification for sales is revenue. Sales affects owner's equity as an increase, so we are going to credit sales. Now, the other thing I need you to realize, you post your totals from left to right. The first total that I post is sales. What's the next thing I post? Cash. Debit. Would Apple a market wrong if I posted cash credit first? Yes. The other thing it would do it was actually would give you not a negative balance, but a, a credit balance in cash. And a credit balance in cash pretty much is a negative number because cash needs to have a debit normal balance. So please remember that you always post from left to right. Okay, So let's post that sales one. So I'm going to choose from the drop-down menu, sales, the date in of March. Now, what is the actual date of the transaction? 31st, because that is the totals. Totals are always on the last day of the month. Don't forget, you can determine how many days are in a month by your knuckles. Showed you that trick. Post reference. What is my post reference going to be? One, because I am on page one of the journal. Yay. Now, sales is going to be credited for $838. So I'm going to put in the credit column 838 it previously had a zero balance, so sales now has a credit balance of 838. Last thing I do, 410 goes below it in parentheses. Now, why parentheses? If I didn't put parentheses, what would it look like? It really would look like $410. So the parentheses around it gives you a point of saying, yep, this is the account number, it's not an actual amount. The next one we're going to do is sales, excuse me, cash. We just did sales. And we have to put in March, days the 31st, post reference is one. And I'm going to debit cash, 5,775. Had a previous zero balance, so I have a balance of 5,775. Then I go ahead and go up top and put in account number 110 in parentheses. 
Now I need to do my credit of 2085. So I have a debit balance of 5,775. I then need to subtract 2,085. My new balance is 3,690 as a debit. Remember your account numbers clue you into the classification. Cash account number starts with the one. Ones are assets. Assets have to have a debit balance. If you had a credit balance here, that would be a clue that something was done incorrectly. Liabilities should have a credit balance. Your owner's equity, your capital account should have a credit balance. Your drawing account should have a debit balance because it's a withdrawal. It's normal balance as a debit. Your revenue, account numbers that start with a four, should have a credit balance, and your expenses should have a debit balance. Classifications clue you into, account numbers clue you into classifications, which should give you normal balances. Did you guys get it perfect? Oh, it said it's graded. Whoops. Hope you got it perfect. I'll change it in a moment. I'm not going to count that as an actual grade. I thought I had changed it. If you could go ahead and save where you're at, and then we're going to look at Work Together 4-4. I'm going to teach this section today also. So looking up here at me, please, because I don't want to try to go ahead and figure. Section 4-4 in our chapter deals with the fact that <gasps> somebody made a mistake, okay, which happens in life, okay? What we have to do is we need to realize if a mistake was made in journalizing and posting, what do we need to do to fix it? Okay? And that's what this section looks at. Basically, what they will give us is they are going to give us information about a transaction that was journalized and posted incorrectly. It's important for you to realize it was journalized and posted because if it was just journalized incorrectly, technically somebody could go up to where it was done incorrectly and just erase and fix it. But if it was posted, that means it's already in, in all kinds of numbers and data, and we need to do what is called a correcting entry. And a correcting entry is basically just taking out of the account that there was a mistake and putting it into the correct account. So for example, this could be an example. Let's say that I was going through and I had an accounts payable account that I was going to affect, but when I wrote the accounts payable account in, I typed in their incorrect one. So let's say that I owed Don's $75. So in a transaction in September, I accidentally put in accounts payable Dairy Queen because they both started with D and I got too happy with my, my fingers and I put in the wrong one. That type of mistake could happen, right? So then I head down that I owed Dairy Queen $75 and later on when I looked at it and I realized, oh, that's not right. So what I need to do is what has to happen to Dairy Queen's account? Dairy Queen needs to go down $75. Would you agree? What has to happen to Don's? has to go up 75 and that would fix that mistake so because I had previously in another month journalized it and posted it and the amount in Dairy Queens was incorrect I need to decrease Dairy Queen and I am going to need to increase Don's now the same thing is true with the with our first set of uh, transaction they gave us here so in our directions it says the journal is given below and your instructor me is going to guide you to the following example. November 1st, discovered that a transaction for supplies bought last month was journalized and posted in an error as a debit to prepaid insurance instead of supplies. So which account was affected that should not have been? Prepaid insurance. So what has to happen to prepaid insurance? Has to go down. Okay, so prepaid insurance is what type of an account? Asset. So if it needs to go down, it's going to need to be credited. Now, which account should be affected? 
supplies. Supplies should have been affected and it wasn't, so supplies is going to need to go up, and the upside of supplies, which is an asset, is going to be a debit. So for this first transaction on the date of November 1st, I am going to debit supplies for $60, and I'm going to credit prepaid insurance $60 with a source document of M15. The hard part is when you look at the transaction to figure out exactly which account was affected that should not have been. Again, first transaction of the month, so I have to put in the month, November 1st. So that's how that transaction would be recorded, supplies and prepaid insurance. Now, the second transaction. Discovered that a transaction for rent expense for last month was journalized and posted as an error to debit to repair expense instead of, re re instead of re rent expense. Can't say that. For $550. Which account needs to go down? Repair, repair expense. Which account needs to go up? Rent. Both of them are expenses. Expenses have a debit normal balance because it decreases owner's equity. Which account needs to be listed first because it matters? Rent. Rent expense needs to be debited. Repair expense needs to be credited. That is section 4-4. That is the entire chapter I just taught you. I told you I could do two in one day, and it would not be too long. All right. Also, as a heads up, I am not here on Monday. I have to go uh, do some stuff for FBLA. Let's take a look at your work for next week. I only have one thing turned on. Huh. Only your study guide. I will turn on the rest of them. Looking at next week's calendar, I just got everything set up correctly. I have what is due on Monday, um, both due at 10 a.m., is 4, 3, and 4, 4. They are short. You should not have a problem getting them done by that. Okay? Stephen? The other thing that I have turned on, and I turned it on earlier this week, is your study guide. Okay? I have taught the whole chapter to you, so you need to have the book read so you can do your study guide. Then you also have 4 or 5 Mastery. This is going to be due Tuesday at 10 a.m. It will turn on for you Monday in class. Okay, so you can't work on that one until starting Monday in class. Same thing, your challenge problem. Remember your challenge problems. If it seems easy, you've made a mistake. There's always a twist or something that makes it makes you think a little bit differently. So the challenge problem is going to be Tuesday at the end of class. And then Wednesday I have the um, using source documents is going to be due. All of that, again, that one should turn on for you Monday in class also. Outline. You also need to work on your outline. So I suggest if you get 4, 3, and 4, 4 done right now, you can then spend the rest of the class working on your outline would then help you to get your study guide done. In class on Monday, also, you could work on your outline, too. Don't want you to forget about it. Just because it's not on Applia doesn't mean it's not due. I have that um, in as a grade already for your power school. Okay, go ahead and get some work done. You're welcome.